souls, how are you doing today? Um, it is May 17th, and I would like to go over maybe a review for some, maybe new information you've never heard of before, but we're going to discuss discernment. And I think it's a, it's a very important um, skill to develop, but I, I see, hear, and feel that it is a, a word that's thrown around in multiple conversations and multiple contexts by people who really don't understand the meaning of the word discernment, um, nor are they incorporating the actual skill of discerning their actions. So it was downloaded to me from source that this was a need for the collective. And in that, in that regard, I am also using um, not just knowledge that I have acquired, but um, knowledge from the Ascension Glossary, which is what I actually looked up a lot of things in when I first was um, activated and cleared my own energy. And then um, other sources as well that help to kind of fine tune our actions, so to speak, because what, what has to happen for discernment is you determine within yourself truth and what are your body cues? Like, what is your soul telling you? What is your guide telling you? What is your inner gnosis leading you towards? So let's get into what is discernment. Um, and I will be referring to notes. Typically, my videos are just really channeled information and um, from my heart and soul. And so uh, I really I, I want to get this as accurate as possible. That is my hope and my intention. And so I actually will be referring to some notes from for here. Um, discernment without using ego judgment, test the personal resonance of people, events, circumstances that you choose to engage with or engage in, determining which is either aligned to your personal residence and choice. The answers change constantly as we evolve and ascend timelines. So if you get a, a good inner resonance, something, someone, a place is resonating with you. That is your, your internal compass of saying, yes, this feels good. This is in alignment to source. This is in my highest and best good. That can happen. And then quite literally in short order, days, hours, weeks, the very same person, place, or thing no longer resonates. You no longer identify with what is being said. It gives you this ucky feeling. So you know that something has changed. Probably lots of things have changed actually because we are changing and jumping timelines very quickly based on our choices. So again, that is an individual ev evolution. So whether it's the change that occurred within you, that you are in a different place in space and time that you no longer resonate with what's coming from that person, place, or thing, or it can be a combination of that plus they no longer resonate because they're in a different space and timeline. So you have to be accepting, number one, that people, places, and things will fall in and out of your timelines based on their own evolution and your evolution. And, and that brings up the sacred geometry of our life. Okay. Um, there are person, places, and things that, that were in my timeline decades ago. And, and I couldn't make heads or tails of it then. And uh, really made choices that removed things, person, places, and things from my timeline. And now, in this now moment, 
some of those are back in my timeline. Well, it's not just a one-off. It's not a coincidence. Um, there's been evolution on their part and on my part that has brought us back into the same timeline, the same path. But um, that reunion is not always a guarantee because everyone has free will choice at play and everyone has an ego that they have to either allow to make the choices for them or hush, set the ego down and listen to the gnosis and your discernment and determine what's in your highest and best good in alignment to source. So learning your personal discernment allows for continual productive growth for the effective use of our personal energies and focused attention. By upholding our personal boundaries and applying discernment towards all things that we focus our energy toward or attention upon, we are more effectively managing our consciousness and our life force. So that means that you are really taking an active role in things that you engage in and the energy exchanges that you participate in. And an energy exchange is not just, um, you know, paying for a service or having something um, given or granted to you. That, that, that's some energy exchanges. But if you're going to sit down and give your energy, time, focus, and attention to um, whatever's coming off of the TV, that's an energy exchange. If you're going to sit down and give your time, focus, attention, energy to um, a, a video, a movie, um, that's an, an energy exchange. And so you want, for me, I will not tell you what to do, but for me, I learned very quickly that um, some people that I really was given a lot of my attention and time to were not for my greatest good. You know, they were, it was a, a time monopoly and there was a lot of guilt, shame, and blame ago, going around that if you didn't spend enough time, you know, um, giving them attention, then, then we were at fault for, for not knowing what we didn't know. <laughs> And I realized, well, that's not positive behavior. Like that's, that's really um, old earth behavior and not at all what I aligned with. And so I cut that attachment. I turned it off, never went back, blocked, whatever. And other people didn't have that reaction to the same behavior. And that's okay for them, but it wasn't okay for me. So I recognized it. I took action and I enforced the boundary. So what that does is it further strength, strengthens your ability to take your power back and to discern where and who and when to have the energy exchange with people, places and things and determine by discernment what's in your highest and best good, what is in alignment to source, what is not in your highest and best good, what is not in alignment from, from source. So that's how I really, really live my life and have for a year. Um, now, prior to being um, clear of all my distortions and stuff, I still had a really good intuition and, um, and I was discerning on a smaller scale with lower frequency and lower energy capabilities and whatnot, that I still had um, a beginner's handle on discernment. And I, that's when I originally felt like there was some kind of throwing around of the word discernment, almost in a, in, a, in a judgment way. And that's when I knew that those that were using the term knew nothing about what it actually meant because it's in the absence of judgment that you can actually discern. You have to be in a place of neutrality. And if you're in a true place of neutrality, you are not judgmental. You're not passing judgment because that's your ego. Relationship Mastery Guidelines has nine steps in a service to others method based on the law of one. The cumulative, I'm sorry, to cultivate our God sovereign free behaviors. 
while reaping the mutual energetic benefits of experiencing more spiritual connection and increased love and appreciation, returning back from others what's given to them, right? And so that's, that's, a, that's more of an equitable exchange where um, you are consciously aware of what you're putting out with full knowledge that it's going to come back to you. Okay. So there's, there's a, a term of like slinging arrows. So there's a lot of people that will sling these arrows and they are so in their ego that they don't think it's ever going to come back to them. And it is. It's either on their on its way back to them now or it's already come back to them. And that's because they're in your alignment to source and your evolution of Christ consciousness. When you truly embody that, you no longer sling the arrows. You sheath the arrows for an actual battle. You no longer have judgment for your fellow brothers and sisters. You have compassion and you have empathy and you have kindness. And so that is an individual evolution, but it is also a practice in discernment. And so for me, once I started to um, embody that, I could detect it easier, much easier. Also the higher frequency after the clearing helps you process that, I call it the matrix BS. Like that's, that's old earth tactics that have been used forever. And I pick up on that very, very readily now. So increased compassionate communication with others, improve related skills in group dynamics. So if you foster increased compassion, understanding, empathy, and kindness, it's going to highlight those in a group setting that can't even come close to that. Um, it's very hard to truly um, fake compassion, empathy, and kindness. Um, it's very easy to see that it is not genuine and, and authentic. Um, in addressing discernment, does the source of your thoughts, actions, and behaviors, when we place our energy and focus and attention there, when we are trying to really focus our energy and attention on our thoughts, our actions, and our behaviors, does it serve your spiritual purpose and personal development? That is a question that I highly recommend each of you ask yourself in a very honest and open conversation to have with yourself. Um, love, compassion, mercy, kindness is all within us. And it, within that, harnessing them, accepting, being in a place of love, compassion, mercy, and kindness. That's whenever we have our power. So um, old earth would say that if you're a compassionate, loving, merciful, and kind person, that's a place of weakness. And that is another sign that those that share that belief are not in alignment to source because those in their alignment to source know that they harness their true power in moments of neutrality, compassion, empathy, mercy, and kindness. You see, there's this glaring difference in old earth and new earth. And so when I say old earth, I'm referring to 3D. When I say new earth, I'm, I'm referring to 5D. And the ability to get from transcend from 3D to 5D is Christ consciousness. So the more that you evolve as a soul and embody Christ consciousness, then the more you will, by natural or organic processes, become more neutral, compassionate, kind, merciful. And by doing that, you also recognize those with that around you that are not. And you have the ability to say, this is not in alignment with my purpose and path for this life. I am in alignment to source and that is not. That feels very um, um, forceful and it feels very um, not in alignment with my soul. And so I'm going to choose not to participate in that. And that's where you draw the line. You set your boundary and you enforce it for the greater good of your soul. 
for the sovereignty of your, your God sovereign freedom behavior. So when we act really more um, in reverence of our own sovereignty and maintain those healthy boundaries, which keep us course correcting in alignment to source creator, we are developing heightened Christ consciousness. We are ascending by raising our frequency and really only participating in high vibrational feelings and emotions and characteristics and um, making an active effort to stop the low vibrational um, feelings, actions, and efforts on other people's part so that it stays away from us. That's how we protect our energy field. So moving forward in spiritual evolution, discernment determines the appropriate level of trust with a person. Are they trustworthy and ethical? So there's people, you know, in my, in my circle that are no longer in my circle because they failed that question that they were potentially trustworthy in actions, but the actions were not ethical or they were ethical in their actions, but they were not trustworthy. Um, consistently and so that's a hard stop for me and that's a decision for you to make um when we achieve that energetic balance within ourselves and that balance harmony um helps to um, energetically balance all things in life so with our spiritual self our heart we can see to have this turmoil, this great overwhelming turmoil and suffering that comes from uh, not having boundaries and just allowing people to throw their negative energy around, um, their judgment, their, their um, non-source characteristics. And this cultivates increasingly healthy and peaceful life so when you recognize it set your boundaries don't participate in that energy exchange you find that that chaos that 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 constantly feeling like you're confused and you don't know which end is up and this turmoil goes away because you are maintaining a healthy balance of energy within your own sovereign energy field and your own soul and you have every right to do that. We have every right to do that for ourselves. So when we are emotionally healthy and peaceful, we're able to access our spiritual self and the heart intelligence. So we easily and greatly increase our accuracy in the levels of discernment. So people that struggle with discernment they're also struggling in other areas. And it usually has to do with attachments and ego. And those are old earth things that really have driven um, decisions and actions by souls to not be in alignment to source. So high vibrational navigation is your guide to discernment. Current polarity differences are seen as satanic and I'll explain that a little bit further if you're forcing things because this voice inside you your ego is saying you deserve this and you deserve that and they don't deserve this and they don't deserve that and you're slinging your judgment around and you're forcing your will um that's not of the light that is not um god source so that's force satanic force versus God's source behaviors. Okay, God's source behaviors are a flow. It's an energy flow, it's not force. It feels good, it doesn't feel like you're, you know, beating a square peg into a round hole. Spiritually abusive, judgmental behaviors are, are abuse. And it disconnects you from God's source and Christ. And Christ. So, when we surround ourselves and allow ourselves to always be surrounded by people who um, 
by way of their own decisions, decide to be judgmental and abusive in their behavior, then you're allowing that judgment and abusive behavior to affect you. And when you feel a certain way, that's your body, that's your gnosis, that's your intuition saying, this isn't in your highest and best good. Let's go to a different area, turn away from this, block it, make better choices so we feel good again. That is your GPS, that is your internal compass saying, don't go that direction, go this direction. This direction is better for us. Um, when you're disconnected from our own spirit in an extreme emotional and mental turmoil, we have little to no discernment to accurate conditions, nor the ability to make clear and informed decisions because fear clouds your discernment. When you're in that fear state, we know that fear is a low vibrational state. It is low energy and low frequency, which is exactly what the controllers love to keep us in that fear state because it makes us vulnerable to the overt um, coercion that they want to push you in the direction they want you to go in. Um, the, your, so your discernment goal is to identify and locate these spiritually abusive behaviors within and in others of which you engage with, whether it be work, family, community, social media, and then work to transform that energy from negative energy to positive energy using your God sovereign free behaviors. All decisions that you're able to make from an informed position will increase your personal discernment. It really increases your, your confidence in yourself. I know that I was in that position before where I had no faith in my ability to make a decision for a while because all my decisions resulted in such chaos. And I was like, well, I obviously am missing something really huge here because I keep making these decisions that keep blowing up like little bombs everywhere. Well, I was disconnected from the ability to hear my guides and my source and, and disconnected from the notes. I, and actually now I know I was hearing it, but I was ignoring it. I was saying, nope, that's, that can't be good for me. Like, mm, whatever. I was ignoring it. Um, again, free will choice is totally at play in any and all aspects of discernment and life, really. So with the increased energetic resonance, which is another way of saying your frequency and one's life, we must remove the lack of trust in our relationship with our higher self and God's source. I see this as a huge obstacle. And I keep asking myself, Let's just go back decades when I used to go to church. There was a fervent desire, praying, wanting to hear that message, wanting to know that your message was heard. Oh, God, please hear my prayers, right? Show me a sign that you hear me. So you have massive amounts of people gathering, praying that their message be received in preordained, scripted prayer, who by and large never really hear from source because they're completely blocked off to that. And when people like myself in this now moment of my life that have cleared out all the blockages, done all the shadow work that I needed to do up to this point, because it does continue. I'm on open channel, I communicate with source. I communicate with Mother Sophia. I'm very, very aware there is definitely Father, Mother, God. I can, I can discern truth in alignment to source versus AI versus satanic versus dark energy very, very well, but I'm not doing it on my own. I'm doing it with my God source. I'm doing it with my spirit team. I'm doing it with my God presence. 
So I essentially have the answer to my prayer from decades ago and the answer to many people's prayers today, but yet they will discount the communication that I have because it doesn't fit into their box. It has to be something wrong with it. The only thing wrong with it is the construct in your mind and your ego telling you that it can't be happening because it definitely happened. So when you allow yourself to evolve, when you allow yourself to grow from the preordained construct of what the patriarchy has decided that we all needed to be and could only be that, when you push that aside and you bust those walls down and you realize that energy is free flowing and it can't be destroyed. It can only be transmuted and transformed. And we are energy bodies. And the more faith, the more connection, the higher we are embodying our Christ consciousness, the higher the frequency gets then we have true communion with our creator, with our God presence, the source. That is invaluable. No one can ever take that from me, but me. It's always been available to me. I was the reason why I did not have um, that effective communication before now but it was also a matter of divine timing and divine ways. Like you have to go through certain things to be able to see, hear, and understand what's happening in your life. And that growth and that evolution and allowing yourself to be everything that that source creator, Mother Sophia, intended for you to be takes a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith. And so if you have no faith in speaking to your higher self, And knowing that your higher self is always in a place of neutrality, but in your highest and best good, then you know you have some work to do. And if you have no true faith to take a step on a path on nothing but pure faith, then you have work to do. And that is for you to decide. The only thing we can change is ourselves. I used to say this to my kids. You're only in control of your body, your mind, your heart. You can't control what other people are doing. You control yourself. So put the energy, the effort, the focus, the attention inward. Inward. That is where all the answers are. And you may not like what you see at first because a lot of it is going to be what's been placed there. And you have to tell your ego to shut the hell up. Because what the, what the society has said we are is really not who we are. The labels that have been placed on us, that's not who we are. It took me a long time to realize that I had identified myself, my like entire adult life as a nurse. That's it. That was the only label that ever mattered. I was much less embodying of other labels that should have meant more, like mother, daughter, sister. Those relationships were harder for me. And I now know why. But Nonetheless, I accepted that label because it was escapism. When I could just say, I got to go to work. I can't deal with that. Sound familiar? So looking inward is a task. It's a pill. It's a journey full of highs and full of lows. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. But I'm telling you, when you break down the artificial construct of what society has said you are and you get to the meat of who you really are at a soul level you will be surprised 
probably pleasantly surprised at how much power you actually have, how much ability you actually have, and how good it feels to be sovereign, to do what makes your soul happy, to do what is in alignment with source, brings you so much peace and calmness. So that in itself is the biggest illustration that I can, I can impart to you. Because whenever you start to make these sovereign decisions that are um, unapologetically enforcing the boundaries that keep your energy field and your soul sovereign and free and alignment to source creator, the peace and calm and love and compassion and wholeness that you feel is invaluable. When you compare that to how we feel when we're doing what we're told and when we're walking the line and we're doing all the linear things that all the controllers say we have to do to be anything, does that compare in my world, in my existence, the two could not be further apart in how it feels and how it resonates in my soul. I could immediately feel that if I start to get a little out of alignment, it feels very forced. It feels like I, I'm somewhere I shouldn't be. And I course correct back into alignment with force. So the change that we want to see in the world starts within ourselves. Be the change that you want to see. Because we all, whether we realize it or not, are setting an example for others around us. And if you want to just be brave for a minute, just go within. Listen to your inner gnosis, the inner knowing, and make one small step that takes your power back. One small step that enforces your sovereignty. One small step that does your soul justice and alignment to source creator. And it might make other people ruffle their feathers. They may question you. And when you just tell them, this is what makes my soul happy. And I feel really good about this decision. I'm not going to entertain this idea any longer. Walk away. It becomes a them problem. See, you've done your soul justice. You've made a God source centered, heart centered decision. You have acted on it and you have enforced it. And that is when you get the big mm, hug from our spirit team, because that is what they want from, from us is to be authentic, to be honest kind, compassionate, sovereign beings in alignment to source because our, our, um, our power, our frequency, anything and everything that we ever wanted is infinite at that point. Infinite. No more roadblocks. No more you can't do that because you're not here and you're not there. It is a freedom that they never wanted you to know you could have. And so I invite you to try it and see where it takes you. Vibration, which is your frequency, plus discernment equals freedom in all ways, always. And I leave you with that. Thank you for joining me today on Healing Disclosures and I look forward to seeing you next time. We can be broken down. Under a microscope, we can be reduced to a set of systems built on tiny cells. We can be broken down. Exercise tears muscles, tests every breath. Opposition challenges our strength, our belief, our desire, and we push back. We use that resistance to build strength. We use it to build stamina. We use it to understand ourselves. 
We use it to make setbacks our launch pads and obstacles our stepping stones. Ours is a story of recovery, of being broken down to rise up stronger, of turning stress to strength. This is more than a story of fitness. This is the story of life itself. We embrace the breakdown to enhance the buildup. We do it on hillsides, in the pool, and down city streets. We do it through fortitude, through ingenuity, and undeniably through our biology. Our cells are performance structures. While we're talking about our day, our cells are talking to each other, building, renewing, regenerating. At ASEA, this is what we know. This is what we do. So you can maintain the miracle of your body and know what you're made of. We all get broken down and each of us faces the choice to surrender or rise up stronger.